Now with the TR6060s, some T56s, they put a grind mark on the outer and the inner hub so you can line them up and you know that your key slots are in the correct position, orientation. And this can also go on, you know, three different ways because it has three sets of slots. But I think that they fit these up from the factory, you know, as far as movement between the two. I mean, the less movement, the better, the tighter fit, the better, but also the way they shift or actuate in and out. Just make sure that these three slots are in the slot on the inner hub because the ball on your key is gonna go on the middle uh, slot. It's always good practice to put these on the way they came off just to keep everything in the same position. You notice this slider has two different styles of teeth. This side, which is called a non-advanced style tooth, the teeth are protruding past the slider. And if you look on this side, they're not protruding past and that would be called an advanced tooth. This is a hybrid slider. You'll notice the transmission I'm working on is a completely non-advanced style transmission. So that means for the one, two, the three, four, they have non-advanced style teeth on both sides. For example, with a hybrid slider, you could have a non-advanced tooth for fourth gear and an advanced tooth for third gear. That's why it's important that you put it back on the way it came off. In other words, the style teeth on the slider need to match the style engagement teeth on the gear it goes to. I start this assembly with the main shaft upside down. We're going to start with the second gear assembly. I'm going to have to press this on, so I just want to show you guys how everything sets up on the main shaft before I take it to the press. And remember, we have to line up these slots with the slots on the synchro. You'll also notice that I separate the slider into two pieces. I just keep the inner hub on when I have everything stacked up in the press because the outer slider likes to come apart and it's just easier to manage. I'm using a piece of exhaust pipe to lay everything onto and everything's upside down. Also make sure that those synchronizer keys did not come out of place when setting everything up in the press because if they did, you're going to damage parts, and you're going to have to do everything over again. I'm using a Harbor Freight 20-ton press. does the job. You'll find it's a good idea to always check those key slots whenever you're pressing something on or assembling the transmission. Just want to make sure that your, your keys are still in the slot, and then for the bottom synchro as well, still in the slot on the hub. That's it. Put our outer slider on. And then our keys. Then our split lock ring, whatever you want to call this thing. On the outer piece that holds them together. We can drop down our nice new synchro assembly. Again, we're lining up these slots on the slots on the hub. inner needle bearing, a little grease on it. First gear coming down. And here's just another angle to line up the keys. And now we get to go back to the press. Got to press on that bearing and six gear. So that's going to be fun. We've got to hold this whole assembly together. Make sure the keys don't come out while this is being pressed on. Kind of a tricky job. Again, here's another note. This is the way six gear sits on the shaft. You can see how there's like a cross with the uh, lines on here. This is going to be facing up. It'll sit on the transmission like this. So 
I have to hold this assembly up or everything's gonna fall. And we make contact with the bearing. Definitely a lot harder. Is that press fit. Now it doesn't hurt to double check your key slots in case you have to do that over again. We're looking at this ring. That should have a stop to it. it. Should go one way or the other. We're in the slot and same with this ear right here. When I spin the gear, that should uh, actuate that to go one way or the other. And you just wanna make sure that that is in the slot. Same with first. Looking good. With the main shaft right side up, we can put the third gear assembly on. Got a needle bearing, spacer, and then the third gear, and the synchronizer assembly coming up next. And remember to line up your key slots. Key slots on the gear, key slots on the synchro. These holes right here and then the outer ring lines up with the inner ring slots and then our slider is going to line up with these slots now also depending on what model transmission you're working on some of these sliders are side specific so i did mark the outside that's going to be for fourth this is going to go on with that facing out. Now another helpful tip would be to mark these outer rings, these key slots where the slider's gonna go. At least mark one of them so you know where it is when you're putting the hub down. If you take a look at this hub, the key slots are in the same position on both sides. When I go to install this, I cannot see the key slot on the bottom side where I have to line it up. So all you gotta do is just look at the top slot and line it up with your mark since they're in the same position. There we go, we're in the slot. Then you can notice I spin the gear this way. This spins a little bit and stops. And I go the other way, does the same thing. So that means we're in the key slot. And snap in our tabs. And then our snap ring for the front to hold on that slider. A quick tip on these snap rings, they are directional. The side that's facing down right now, the narrow end will face outward because when you put your snap ring pliers and expand them, it will give it something to grip. And if you have to take this snap ring off and you put it on backwards, it's gonna give you a really hard time. And for the fourth synchro, I'm actually gonna lay that on top of the input and we're gonna stack this on top of it into the case and load it that way or else it's just gonna fall right off. Now loading up the case can be kind of tricky. You wanna make sure you got your bearing races in. I like to put grease in the right areas. Just keep it away from the ceiling surfaces around the outside. I like to put grease in the shift rail holes as well as around the front seal. Don't wanna damage a new seal. I put a little grease in here, wouldn't hurt. And then a little bit on the seal surface. And then we got our synchronizer. Put that guy right down on there. We'll make a couple marks where the slots are to help this go a little easier. Coming back to the table here, we gotta get our forks on our main shaft. And I just like to make sure my lugs are in place in the middle. It's 
can really only go on one way. And it should slide right on as long as that's lined up. I'm gonna pick this whole thing up, slide it down in the case. Now the reason I have the input shaft separated from everything else is so I don't damage the seal. It's a lot of weight holding that main shaft and at the same time you're trying to guide that shift rail in the hole and it can be really easy to damage that seal while you're trying to line everything up. That's why I do it separately. You can see I engaged third gear as I put everything down. There it is. I'm gonna show you guys why, why I mark it just in case. I probably should have marked it on this edge, but you can see that tiny little mark between that synchro right there. So that will just confirm that you're in the slot. And then again, just check that the synchro changes direction and stops when you spin. And you know you're in the slots. Next, we got to get that counter gear into its race, into its home. To get that done, this whole main shaft needs to be lifted up about an inch to clear the slider. The way I do that is I put a little pry bar under here and I'll just get under the tip of the input, pry it up a little bit and balance everything and it'll slide right in. All right, everybody's in, everyone's happy. We're gonna go ahead and put our selector lever in. Now this can be a little tricky to put in. The T56s, you can put it in the hole first, but with these, it's probably best that you get it lined up on the interlock. The problem is you gotta get it past the shift lug. So just get it past that and then it'll go right into place. At least it should. There we go. Now here's a good close up of what that all looks like. It's in its neutral position. Everyone's sitting on the interlock and that's how the cases go to go on. Well, that's it for the main part of the transmission. I can now put the case back on. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on my rails, clean up my surface, put some silicone, drop the case on. Now. When you're sliding the case on, this is going to get hung up and it's gonna stop you from putting the case on. You're gonna be shifting into gears. So it's important that you grease this, but I also like to just back this plunger off a little bit because that puts tension on this offset lever and you'll be fighting that tension when you're trying to get this centered on the rail and smoothly put the case down. So just back that off a few threads It'll help a lot. Just remember you go and tighten it back up. Sometimes they fight you a little bit. You just gotta put grease in the right areas. I'm gonna get a little, a couple bolts started here. So I like to snug down two of them, get my uh, guide bolts in, and then I can flip this on the table and torque down the bolts. All right, it's time to get these shift lever guide bolts in. Now, if you look in this hole, you can see at the top left quarter between nine and 12 o'clock, that is our shift interlock plate. Now, our guide bolt will not go in unless we move that out of the way. And in order to do that, we gotta go to the top of the case and pull up gently on the fifth, sixth reverse rail. And by doing that, that will give you enough clearance to get the guide bolt in. 
but you want to be careful and pull up gently because if you get right, the shift go. lugs to fall off the interlock plate on the inside the case has got to come back off and you got to realign everything i did a video a while back explaining it a little better i'll leave a link below if you want to check it out and there we go All right, now I'm gonna flip this around and put it on the table so we can torque up them bolts. So these bolts get 26 foot pounds and the shift lever guide bolts, they get 20. All right, we gotta get our roll pin in. And I usually like to just kind of eyeball it. Like, all right, I got about a quarter inch from this line and we're lined up there. Probably not the best way to do it, but uh, it's just the way I do it. Let's get her started. Well, that covers about 70% of this TR6060. When I continue in part two, I'll show you how the rest of the back half comes together and get this whole thing assembled. If you found this video useful, hit that like and subscribe and stay tuned for part two.